Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the North Juanita. We're glad to have you with us on our show this evening. We're especially glad for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in the cities in our area. If you haven't watched us before, each week we have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area, uh, city council people, mayors, sometimes uh, city staff, to bring you information about what's currently happening and what's going to be happening in that city. And then we do encourage you that if any of the issues resonate with you, they're important to you, then be sure to be in, con in contact with your mayors and city council people because that helps them know what to, you're thinking and they can bring that into the whole picture and process of uh, governing the city. So we're glad to have you with us and tonight we're very happy to welcome as a guest Dr. Mark Schultz. Thank you. Who was on the Osseo City Council. Thank you. We're glad to have you back with us again. Oh, it's, always, it's always a pleasure being here with you. <laughs> And then I asked you to think to introduce yourself to our wider audience. Sure. The people in Osseo, I bet, know you pretty well. <laughs> but some in the other cities might not. So if you just give them a little background. Sure. Um, well, I'm Dr. Mark Schultz. Um, I was elected in 2009. So mm -hmm. I'm currently in my 10th year in the city council. Ah. Um, I, of course, live in Osseo. And then I actually am a chiropractor by trade. And I own a business um, about four blocks from my home. Ah. Um, I've sat on every major subcommittee currently. Um, I'm on the Economic Development Authority, uh -huh. um, as well as I am one of the longstanding members on our risk management, uh -huh. um, and then our uh, HR subcommittee as well. So the two uh, major subcommittees that work hand in hand with our state administrator oh, to yes. make sure that they're getting very direct feedback regarding the directions of the council, as opposed to a lot of other cities that are just pretty autonomous in that respect. That right. That's just not the relationship that we've mm -hmm. developed with our city administrator, and it works out really well. Yeah, you do what works, right? Right, exactly. And then I asked you to think a little bit about what do you hear most from the residents of Osseo? What, what, when you, people bump into you in the store or call you on the phone or send you an email, what are they looking to find out? Well, like everybody else, it all depends what's happening around town. Uh -huh. Okay, you know, uh, this time of year is construction season, road right, construction season. Right. So you hear a lot about that and the, and the successes and the different aspects of what's happening there. Um, here in about a month or two, um, when we're gonna really start working and developing our budget and getting that preliminary budget out, we hear a lot oh, about taxation. Right, right. Um, and <clears throat> outside of that, the, the most common things that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are either welcoming new businesses to town, uh -huh. working with them to make that happen, um, or when somebody is trying to expand or, or with the new business planning and zoning questions, uh -huh. kind of help me field that um, situations where um, people, and it's, it's becoming more and more rare, but you know, when they're speaking with city staff and they're not necessarily understanding oh, the answers, right, right. kind of taking it and in, in looking at what the city staff perspective is, what their perspective right. is, and then making sure they understand where the city staff is coming from. Right. And then occasionally we'll go back and we'll try to see if we can't find a compromise or something like that. But those are really the major areas. And then, of course, the ongoing ones are always safety. Right. Um, you know, it's summer, so in a lot of communities here have increased um, crime and, and mm, different right. things and lost dogs and all kinds of things like that. So that those are really the big ones that I hear the uh -huh. most about. Because... Okay, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about redevelopment in Osseo, mm -hmm. which you've done a lot over the last 10 years while you've been mm -hmm. on the council. Um, if you can tell <coughs> us about some of the newest businesses that have come to Osseo, what the name is, mm -hmm. what they do, sure. and kind of where they're located. Sure, so uh, probably one of our most high-profile businesses that um, a lot of people have seen coming, they haven't uh -huh. really gotten to the point where signage yet, is a company called Union Speed and Style. They were okay. formerly in Monticello and they purchased the former Osseo Sports Building, uh -huh. um, which was right on the corner, kitty corner from City Hall. Oh, okay. And uh, I've had the opportunity to be in there a couple times, and uh, they've done a phenomenal job, a total reconstruction of uh -huh. an old building, um, which is very difficult to find someone right. that's willing to do that kind of work. Right. But they're an automobile restoration company, so, so they, they appreciate fits. old, right. worn out things and trying right. to make them new, so that was right. really good. They bought two buildings. They're gonna be in one side of it, um, this, our planning commission, just held a um, meeting, I think it was yesterday, 
uh, on a tattoo um, shop that's coming oh. in. Um, and then the other side of the building as well, and that's right downtown by Dean's, uh -huh. um, they've been in talks for either a brewery, distillery, oh. restaurant of some sort, but they needed to really focus on getting their business moved because they, right. when they moved from Monticello, the building that they were actually in there was purchased by the city and torn down. Ah. So at a very specific timeline, they had to ah. get out. Um, so looking, we're looking forward to a um, large um, grand opening for that facility, and it's oh, going to be... Right. It's really a, a statement and a testimony to these guys' restoration abilities. Oh, um, right. they, they bought uh, parts of buildings from racetracks in Nebraska oh, and Chicago, and it's just ah. it's gorgeous inside. Oh, um, I have to stop by. And right. Another new one that we've had recently is a tea and smoothie shop called Nourish. Okay. It's in the former Luna Coffee Building, uh -huh. um, right there um, across Kitty Corner, across the street from Union Speed and Style. So. Right. They're in there as well. We've had a couple of yoga and wellness studios come into town. Um, kind of, we're seeming to kind of be an alternative healthcare oh, um, destination with yeah. the different people coming in. Right. And, and uh, it's it's nice to be able to partner um, there as well. Um, and then there was just an, an old um, commercial slash residential property that was just recently changed hands. And uh, we've got a temporary business that's in ah. there, and but we're always we're always consistently looking for new opportunities, right. and figuring out ways to attract those kinds of businesses and let them know that we're there and we're oh, not just a drive-through right. community. Right. And I always comment that Osseo's Main Street looks like what some of the newer cities are trying to duplicate. <laughs> so you've got a benefit, right, to start with, right? Well, and that's, that, you know, I appreciate you noticing that because there's a lot of cities that are spending a lot of money to try to replicate what we have had for 100 years. Right, um, right. So we, it's, it's, it's very difficult, and I've said this on your show before, to move Osseo ahead and move it forward, as the title of your pro, of right. your show is, without losing who we are. It's, oh, it's incredibly yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you have to keep keep that in mind all the time, I bet. Right, I, at least my, my perspective on that, for sure. Now, part of redevelopment is your Economic Development Authority, mm -hmm. known as EDA. Yep. A lot of people don't have any idea when they read that in the newspaper what that is, so sure. I thought you could tell a little bit about it and some of the things they've been doing. Sure, I didn't. I've never heard of it before. I ran for council either, yep. and I've been on it from the from day one. Um, the Economic Development Authority is a group of people. In our case, it's four council members and then three mm -hmm. um, community members or business members uh -huh. that are focused on redevelopment and business sector, and some EDAs focused on housing. Right. Um, and so we focus on that kind of stuff. There's different powers that are um, given to us through the state legislature that allows us to incur debt, uh -huh. issue bonds for certain things right. differently than how the city can do right. different things. So, for example, when we built our new police department, we used our EDA issuing capacity to float that debt and the city actually pays EDA back for oh. the bond issues and that. So that's our primary focus is, is getting businesses redevelopment right that kind of thing. Sometimes it gets kind of lost in the shuffle. Sometimes mm -hmm. it gets a little more active depending upon who the members are and oh. the experience of the members because right. it's very, it's a, e it's a very easy meeting to get lost in oh. if you're not familiar with all the different components of it, so. Yeah, something new to most people, right? <clears throat> right, just like anything else, just take some time to dig into it. Maybe you can talk a little bit to the fact that I think that it has become more and more important for smaller cities to actively work on recruiting mm -hmm. businesses. So maybe you could speak to that issue a little right. bit. Right. One of the things that we <coughs> don't do in Osseo is we don't necessarily target a specific use for a property. Okay. Um, one of the things that's allowed us to get to where we are these last 10 years is, is that we try to have this attitude of getting out of the business's way. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we want to help them help us. And that's really paid off well for oh. us. Um, you know, there's certain minimum standards and sometimes you can be more flexible oh, or less right. flexible depending right. on different things. But right. we're not the kind of community that's going to be like, I don't want to have this business right here. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to come in and do space, um, we usually figure out a way to make sure. it work. Sure. Um, you know, as long as you do the follow the programs of your permits and oh, different things like right, that, everything right. is fine. Um, <clears throat> but in doing so, we have to really get out there and do different things. We're very blessed in the fact that our EDA president 
and our mayor who's been with me involved for the uh -huh. last 10 years is a commercial developer by trade. Uh -huh. I mean, he's a real estate agent that does that. So right. he knows. So a lot of the development that we've had have been through relationships that he's had. Oh, that helps. Unless you are actively pursuing those relationships, um, you're not going to get that. Right. Um, if you're just the kind of person who wants to serve on a committee or something like that, um, we really need people that can represent the business interest, but in addition, be willing to talk to their friends, oh, right. neighbors, right. and different things like that about bringing things in. So we're lucky in that fact that we've got a lot of people that um, are connected around the city in uh -huh. different communities. And we also have a benefit of our huge um, gateway sign uh, on the corner oh, of Conrad right, 81 right. and um, Central Avenue. Um, and we're working on an initiative myself, um, our city planner, and the current owner of Osseo Savit Paint, which is right downtown Osseo, uh -huh. is helping, we're putting together a more proactive, outward focused approach to really let the community businesses that are there, because businesses interact network with other businesses. Oh, sure. And they're gonna hear when something's going on here, or something's going on there, or they need more space, or right. whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. So we're gonna really focus on a plan over the next year of making sure that we're getting all of our businesses informed through ah, the newsletter or right, visits, right. Um, getting out their special city staff as winter's coming mm -hmm. about, you know, the fact, don't pile your snow up on on the curb line, push it into the street, right. it's easier for us to move, oh, sure. um, different things like that. So we're gonna be working that on over the course of the next year to really get out there and tell people what's coming in. Also, I did forget that there was an ownership change in um, the CJ's Auto um, right downtown um, Osseo uh, uh -huh. at the stoplight uh, and I'm very happy to have a person that's been a good friend of mine for about uh -huh. 10 probably about 10 years or so okay. that uh, was able to move into that um, position they're still working on the final details but he's working there full-time now uh -huh. and uh, those are the kind of ways that those things get right. done right. it's just and it's just it's fun to see us do that because people appreciate the nature of our community and oh, that's really yes. what we are yes <clears throat> And then are there some particular areas of Osseo that are kind of in the near future that you're going to do some redevelopment or is it more as it comes along you find places? I, yeah, yeah, I understand you. Yeah, I understand yeah. you. I mean, you always need to be somewhat strategic. Uh -huh. um, you know, going through this, you kind of talked about the 20-year comp plan. Right. Um, going through that, um, we were forced to really look at different areas because we've got mandates mandates for us that, for example, by 2040, the Met Council said that we're supposed to see a 20% um, increase oh, in population, right, right. okay? If you've been to Osseo, <laughs> I don't know where that's gonna come I, from, okay? I wouldn't know either. Um, so we've identified a block on the north end of town uh -huh. that could be a more um, condensed uh, living community, uh -huh. um, business community, potentially. Um, along 81, there's a couple areas of properties okay. that have been there for um, quite some time right. that, you know, when they get ready to um, retire and move on, that we can start negotiating oh, sure. there. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of areas. The church I spoke of earlier right. um, has a very large parcel of land. And so, you know, when they, when and if they ever um, are interested in, in uh, doing anything with that, we're interested in talking oh, to them sure. and seeing if there's something we can do to help each other and be mutually beneficial. Right. Um, but short of that, I mean, we're not, we're not going to build anything on mm -hmm. land that doesn't involve some work. Right. Um, so at this point in time, we're tearing down to build new stuff. Yeah. That, that um, you're at the redevelopment stage, not the development stage. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And there's one area that has some buildable land, and it's an apartment complex, two buildings over um, by the baseball field uh -huh. at Osseo Senior High School. They were purchased about a year, year and a half ago that we would love to... Um, facilitate some there, but they're primary property management company and they're not uh -huh. really interested in developing. So we're trying to figure out new and creative ways oh, to sure. make it a win-win for them. And right. so that's where we're relying on uh, our mayor and those of us that have those relationships to kind of figure out if we can dream up and right. conjure up and figure out some way to make these different kind of things work. Because, you know, it's, again, we want to progress without right. messing up our community. Right. Um, but the more people you have to share the tax burden, the less mm -hmm. the burden is on everybody right. else. And right. the fact of the matter is, is that I don't know when the last time I saw the price of anything go down, <laughs> <I agree. laughs> other than gas every once yeah, in a while. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just it's a it's 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 a very constant struggle, especially with the makeup of oh, our community and the yes. fact that you know we're not like the Maple Groves, the Brooklyn Parks, and yeah. Dayton's where there's a lot of expansion <laughs> right. land. We right. just don't have no. that. 
Yeah. Um, now, there's something that Osseo does that I haven't run across any other city that's done it, <laughs> that you have a summer trolley program. Yep. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the program. Uh, sure. So this trolley program has been around for quite some time. It used to be um, ran um, and operated by the Lions. Uh-huh. <clears throat> the ownership and maintenance was transferred to us um, through generous um, financial support and 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 uh, space support of Evans Norby Funeral Home. Uh -huh. We're able to do the continue with this program. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and what it is is it's a golf cart. Right. Okay. It's a it's a two seater. It's a it's a two row golf cart um, that plenty of people um, around the community volunteer to drive and. During the hours of operation, which we'll get to in a second, right. you call, they'll come to your house, yeah. they'll, they'll take you to a doctor's appointment, right. um, they'll take you to a holiday to get something to drink, uh -huh. they'll take you to City Hall to pay a utility bill, they'll take you to a liquor store, they don't care right. where they stop. So right. um, it's, a, it's, it's a free ride service, right. we, don't, we don't and actually can't charge for it. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it's just a really, it's, it's really great addition to our community with all the other golf carts that we have cruising around. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, what a good idea for people, <clears throat> and um, it's kind of a fun way to go to an appointment, right? I think so too. <laughs> yep. And the what time of year does it begin, and when does it end? Sure. Um, it, usually, it starts around the spring. Depends on weather. Okay, um, of that kind of stuff. And then it usually goes around through September. Uh -huh. Depends upon a lot of our retirees that are wintering someplace else will oh, come back sure. for the summer, uh, and they'll drive it. Um, our retired police chief. Um, uh -huh drives for us, lots of people around the community. Right. And, and they're open um, Monday through Friday. Um, and I believe the first ride is scheduled to go out around nine. Uh -huh. um, and 2.30 is usually when it starts, but you can call, um, appointments aren't necessary. Right. And you put, I hope you put up the number yeah, for I'll us the there, that 763-257-3142 right. number, that they can call and make arrangements for right. those rides. Um, it's, it's not like Uber, okay? Uh -huh. So don't call and expect they're gonna be there in five right. minutes. No. <laughs> so a little planning ahead is very, very helpful. Right. Right, but let people know that that's a benefit available only in Osseo, it's, right? I have not seen I, it in There many might other be places. other cities, but I haven't run across nah, any. No, nobody's as cool right. as Osseo. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit about Osseo's water tower. Kind of update people on it, because it's kind of been in flux for a while, right? Um, but yeah, it's, kind it, of. it's kind of settling in a direction or other. but. Tell us what's happening in the past and kind of where it, where it is right now. Sure, and I assume we have two water towers, so I assume you're talking oh, about the one yeah, downtown. The, the yep. one downtown, the, the <coughs> yep. older one. Um, it, uh, our current water tower is going through a conditions assessment um, uh -huh. program to determine um, what conditions it's in, what repairs have to be needed to make sure that we're keeping it standing um, for years and years and years. And, and uh, that was a part of it after it became um, a historic preservation right. designated landmark. Right. Because that took quite a while. It took some individuals from the city to get that process completed so it could be on a federal listing, right? Yep. It, uh, it, you know, we had a um, person that ran for council, was very active uh, in our community, It really wanted to take that project uh -huh. on. You know, it was, uh, the reason it was in flux is you have a, you know, a um, water tower that I think right now is approaching 100 years of age. Yes. <coughs> and um, if not a little bit over and it doesn't hold any water. Right. Neither of ours do, okay? Right. So it's not a water tower for water. Right. It's a nostalgic right. type of a thing. Right. Right. Um, and uh, you know, the decisions between what different programs to fund in with it versus uh -huh. a nice looking feel good water tower was a debate that went on for several years. Oh, right. Um, a lot of people feel very passionate about that historical mm -hmm. component of it. Um, and as it settled down, the decision was made to keep it um, not that it can't be taken down at any right. given point in time. Right. I mean, that's not, because they declared it, they don't necessarily provide us with all the funds. So right oh, now we're going sure. through a conditions assessment. I'm pretty, I'm quite certain that we received a grant uh -huh. from um, the federal government or state government to pay for that, right. to take a look at it. And we've done some assessments on it before, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not gonna be different information that we're not familiar with. Um, but uh, we're looking forward to the results of that coming in so we can figure out, again, it's, it's a constant thing. I mean, being put on the, it, it's an important thing of history, right? But unfortunately, history gets taken down all yeah. the time. Yeah. How much money can you invest, and how much can you raise, and well, yeah, what kind of grants can you get? And if the average person has to pay, you know, fifty, sixty, a hundred dollars extra 
in their utility rates and water fees a year to keep that water tower standing, how many people are agree to yeah, that? Yeah, right. You just never right. Know. So it, it, that's an important decision, and it's. I think you've gotten a lot of community input along the way. Mm -hmm. We've and, sought that out. And plus the fact that I always like to let people know that on your water tower thing, and in the same thing in other cities, if there is a citizen that has the <laughs> desire to put the time in, you can cooperate with cities and get a lot of things done. Yeah, it's where, uh, where, where you've got the person that will do that work to make it happen. And we have a lot of volunteers like uh -huh. that in Osseo, actually. I mean, we've got a great couple from uh, one of the retirement communities around that's been doing a tremendous job of cleaning up our flower beds. Ah. And so we're very lucky to that. And, yeah. and this person took this on, did a great amount of work, and spent a lot of time doing different things with it. And uh, we're very grateful for her help. Yeah, and so uh, those of you out there, if you've got some idea that you'd like to see happen, explore it with your city council and if you explore it with them then be ready to provide the energy to make it happen exactly right okay uh, there's different ways to pay off the property assessments sure. like we talked with mm -hmm. uh, about the roads what are some of besides roads what are some of the other things that cities assess people for um, in our community, it's pretty much just roads. Okay. It's roads, it's streets and alleys. Okay. So it's, it's a roadway type of situation. You know, we have, uh, every city has what's called enterprise funds. Right. Um, in our case, we're fully built, built out. Uh -huh. We have the enterprise, enterprise funds that are there, which is a self-sustaining fund. <coughs> Example is your water fund, your store some, your right. fund, your stormwater fund. We've had to build those back up because uh -huh. those were pretty much um, zero or in the negative uh -huh. 10 years ago. So we've had to we've had to do that, and our committee has stood by us, and our business community has really stood by us with oh, that. I mean, they're good. the huge waters of the user, uh, oh, huge right. of water, excuse me. Um, so that's one of the areas that they help contribute directly. And uh -huh. people, like, what's that business doing for me? One of the things is they're paying a lot of your water fees, <laughs> um, and so. Uh, that's the primary thing that we assess people for in our community right. is just the streets and the alleys. Okay, once the assessment's made, what choices do people have about paying off that assessment? Well, that's always included in, the, in, those, in that slew of letters that comes your right. way. Right, that um, you should open up. <laughs> exactly. Um, I believe the date is November 15th of I, the year. Um, like, for example, you're going to get notices in August, September, you know, October, November right, right. for something that's happening next year. Right. So once you, once that has been there and you get that assessment notice, um, you have an opportunity to pay it off before it gathers interest. Right. right that, away, that's where that November just, 7, yeah. that's November 15th date comes into play. Um, again, it's just like anything else, you know, it's going to come, it needs to happen. It's kind of one of the, the reasons that, you know, you live in a city, you expect a certain type right. of living, but it kind of right. is what comes with it. Right. Um, you can also, so you can pay it off without interest. You uh -huh. can pay it off at any point in time with the interest that's been accrued on, right. on the debt as well. Or probably one of the more popular ways is, is that uh, depending upon the term that the city council set, sometimes they're 10 years, sometimes they're 15 uh -huh. years, sometimes, I mean, they can be 20 years. Um, assessments, <coughs> it's, it's like an installment loan, like a right. car payment or whatever right. else. The, um, there's an interest rate that's set between um, the, l the lender who you're borrowing your money right. from and this the county sets the different things up, and you just pay that like anything else. Right, and so people have the opportunity. And you, at the beginning, maybe they can't pay it all off, mm -hmm. but as their situation changes, they could do it any year. But before November fifteenth, they have to set up the details. <coughs> before November fifteenth is how they can avoid the interest right, for the coming right. term. Right. So that so, if you pay it off early, because you can, you mm -hmm. can save a fair amount of interest. Exactly. It would actually yes. build up and be of value mm -hmm. to you as you go forward. Exactly. And our city clerk is a great resource for these types of things. Her name's Land. She's been with the city forever, um, 20 or more years for sure. And uh, she's very, very well versed ah. on how to navigate that system. Right. So. Yeah, so there's certain paperwork and things that need to happen. But you can contact the city, so it's a good thing for people to think about. It's government. It's very form dependent. Right, right, definitely. <laughs> and we'll put up the phone number for them to call, too. Yeah, just our straight telephone number we can ask, and then you'll find her. Right. And then we'll just end up with the fact that there's a lot of volunteer there's a lot of volunteer places for people in the city mm -hmm. and it's important to get people involved maybe you can talk about some of the commissions that Osseo has sure, in certainly. the process of joining one if, if somebody is 
of that interest. Exactly. We actually currently ha yeah, we have a current uh, opening on a couple of our committees right now. Ah. So um, we have a planning commission, okay. which is a statutorily um, created body uh -huh. that you need to have um, for the city. Uh, we have a park and rec committee. We have a public safety committee. Um, our EDA we talked about earlier. Um, and heritage preservation and wow. other different committees um, around there. Park and Rec is relatively new. Ah. Um, we had to push several years ago for increased funding for recreational programs. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I uh, was very much against only funding for one group of people. I wanted ah. to open up if we're going to increase that funding for all of the right. people. So the Park and Rec Commission was created. Ah. Um, I think it, and my wife Kirsten has been the chair of that commission now for three or oh. so years. She was, you know, our kids were much younger at the time. She was, right. she was, it was one of these conversations you have around the house uh -huh. you probably had before. Uh -huh. Like, I don't like the way this is going. Well, good. Why <laughs> don't you get involved and fix <laughs> right, it? Right, um, right. So she did that, and she's been a, she's been a, um, by the body. She's been appointed as the chair of that. So. Um, any of those types of things. Uh, those are usually posted on our city website. Okay. Um, it's also important, the big times those things turn over is a lot of um, terms run out in December 31st. Right. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in doing those types of things, keep your eyes peeled. Get to know your council members. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it before. Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, as a council member, one of the things is that I don't hear enough about what people are thinking. Right. So, right. you know, um, I kind of look at it as a good thing. If, uh -huh. if I was doing something wrong, people usually tend to tell you. <laughs> right, um, right. And there's some people that, you know, in our position, they're never going to like what you're oh, doing. They're just right. totally pointed in the other direction. And that's, that's okay. Most of the time they're concerned about right. themselves, not everybody else around right. them. Um, but so you can watch our website. Uh -huh. um, now, we always advertise. It goes up on our gateway sign right. also. We use and that as well. And can they make applications ahead of time? Fill um, them out or is it better to do it? <clears throat> so often what we'll do, um, we had a couple of vacancies on our EDA this past uh -huh. year when we were forced to choose. I, didn't, you never, I hate choosing between two different people because oh, yeah. you got to choose. And, and uh, one, this one person didn't get it, but um, then another person quit. Uh -huh. So then we had another opportunity there for that person. Uh -huh. And so um, <clears throat> the, the applications aren't, it's not like um, a lot of people will tell you a job application, like okay. they're just kept there to be pulled from, pulled right. from, pulled from. Right. We look for a new interest because people's life situations oh, change sure, and different certainly. things like that. So, but yeah, um, city website, um, you know, the importance of watching city meetings. Oh, right, um, right. That's where you can really get a lot of information. It's uh, not always necessarily the most exciting things. I try to do my best to have some entertainment uh -huh. value whenever I can. <laughs> um, but uh, really, the only way to be involved is to be involved. We're right. not going to, we're not going to knock on your door doing that. But if you have an interest in that stuff, you express it to a council member right. and they will help guide you when that resource is needed. And then people can go visit their meetings just to see what they're like. So Absolutely. just encourage people to get involved. And the calendars for all those meetings are posted on our city right. website. Right. Um, over on the left side, I think, under um, boards and commissions. Okay. Memberships are there. Contact information is right. there. That's actually one of the really easy things to find on right. our website. Well, I want to thank you so much You're for welcome. Thank sharing you. your time and your experience with our audience out there. Thank you. And we're glad that you're with us and look forward to seeing you again. Bye.